So if we can understand a little bit of the physics of an airplane wing, I think we can understand the arch of the foot a whole lot better. Good morning. Happy Friday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. We had a great uh, Coffee and Coaches Conference call yesterday. Sorry you missed it if you if you did. Um, it was really, really good. We went really long too. We were like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. So it was really fun. Um, and then I had a great mentorship call almost immediately after that. And that's where today's Q&A question is gonna come from because it was a really neat, really neat presentation. A little bit off the beaten path and, and um, initially a little bit confusing as, as to what um, my mentee was really looking at and then it just it, it, it becomes clear once you sort of put the pieces together So we're going to use that uh, Like I said to drive to the, today's Q&A. So let me give you this scenario uh, The confusing presentation was that the client that he was working with uh, had a limited straight rate straight leg raise limited hip flexion limited hip IR but a really high arch in the foot which which again that looks like a combination of a, a very late propulsive strategy in, in the, the pelvis and the hip, but an early uh, propulsive foot. And so again, there's a little bit of confusion there, but, but if we break this down, there was one uh, telling representation in the foot that, that sort of gives it away as, as to what's really going on. First and foremost, let's talk a little bit about airplane wing physics, because if we can understand a little bit about an airplane wing, so bear with me here. If we understand a little bit about an airplane wing, we're gonna understand a little bit more about an arch. So that the way that an airplane wing works is as the as the air passes over the airplane wing, it creates a low pressure above the wing and a high pressure below the wing, and that's what creates a lift. If we look at the arch of the foot, we're gonna see a very similar representation here. So if I look at my early propulsive foot, I have an arch. And so what I actually have is I have a lot of concentric orientation underneath the foot in this early propulsive strategy. So this is a concentric yielding strategy on the bottom of the foot, which means that I have this eccentric strategy on top. So eccentric is high volume, low pressure. Underneath we have concentric orientation, which is low volume, high pressure. So this is literally just like an airplane wing. And so again, low pressure on top, high pressure on the bottom. And that's what's gonna help me maintain that arch. As I move through the three rockers, so, so I have my early propulsive phase, which is my, my heel rocker, and then my ankle rocker. So to have a normal ankle rocker, what I have to be able to do is I have to be able to flip-flop the pressures. So I have to be able to create the eccentric orientation on the bottom, so the low pressure strategy here, and the high pressure on top. And so if I can't create the, the transition in pressures, I can't translate the ankle over the foot. And so it looks like I might be able to, might be stuck here. Now, let's go back to our initial representation here. We have somebody that is way forward. We have, we have posterior lower compression in the pelvis. We have posterior lower compression in the thorax. And we have a, we have a foot that looks like a high pressure foot uh, underneath. Well, what we have to understand is, is that we, as we go through ankle rocker and we pick up this heel, so as I move into late propulsion, I'm moving back towards where I'm gonna translate the tibia posteriorly again, and I'm gonna create that, what you'll look in the literature will say the windlass effect, where the heel comes up, I'm recapturing concentric orientation underneath, so I'm creating that high pressure strategy underneath the foot. And under normal circumstances, I would have toe extension. But if I take this foot and I jam the heel down, you can see that I have this massive amount of concentric orientation here. If the heel is down and I keep the tibia over the foot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a reversal of the, of the effect on the, the concentric orientation on the bottom of the foot. So here we actually get to use dead guy anatomy for a second, which is kind of fun. So the dead guys, they pulled on the, on the muscles from, from this end and they go, oh, I got toe flexors. So what I end up with is a foot that looks like that. So we have a high arch in a foot, we have a low pressure strategy on top of the foot, and then we have toes that are, that are flexed at the end. And so what that tells us is we had a foot that was trying to pick up the heel into a late propulsive strategy, but I couldn't get the heel up because of, of the center of gravity being too far back, and so I just curled my toes under. So we actually do have 
a foot that matches the propulsive strategy above. So what we're gonna see, we'll see this on a lot of folks that, that are really driven by compressive strategies and, and really, really strong concentric orientation. So um, again, we can pick on power lifters a lot because that they drive a tremendous amount of these compressive strategies to lift very, very heavy weights. So you'll see like the toed out kind of a, a position. You'll see the, the power lifter with a lot of compressive strategy and very, very high arches, almost to the point where they can't even get their big toes down to the ground but they're gripping the floor uh, with the end of those their toes so the simple strategy is to say okay well let's just move you back towards this this normal middle propulsion which would be great and all fine and wonderful if it's doable so it's very very difficult to do this because of the amount of concentric orientation that you have um, all the way up up the chain so to speak so the solution here then is to take them all the way back to early propulsion because then we don't have to force them out of this concentric orientation right away. So this is gonna be situations where we might start with um, an anti-gravity situation. So we put them on their back, we put them in hook line, and we can drop that foot down into that early propulsive strategy with, without a lot of gravity on it, and that might be a solution for us if we have enough hip flexion available to us. If we don't, then we, we drop them further towards the traditional zero degrees of hip extension. We keep them in a slightly um, uh, early propulsive strategy, foot on the wall, but, but hip, ex, hip, hip closer to extension as represented here. Um, and that might be the way, the way that we start them. If we can, if we can move them into the gym, then this is gonna be where we do all, our, all of our heels elevated activities. So the heels elevated is gonna move us back towards a fairly early propulsive strategy. We're gonna get that posterior expansion that, that we're looking for. That, and then we can slowly start to move them, them back forward through a normal uh, middle propulsive strategy. So what we'll do is we'll do like maybe heels elevated toe touch, heels elevated squat might follow that. And then maybe we can move into uh, split stance orientation as we start to capture more and more uh, hip flexion. Um, so that might be a, a, a front foot heel elevated split squat um, and then moving them towards a normal front foot elevated squ split squat. And eventually um, a, a shallow stance split squat that allows a lot of tibial translation over the foot. So we're, again, so we're, we're re-educating this, this middle propulsive strategy where we can go from the, the high pressure arch to the low pressure arch back to the high pressure arch. Um, in a worst case scenario, um, where we have a lot of anterior posterior compressive strategies what we may need to do is do some of these things in, in isolation so we got a little little video here that, that should be playing if my technology is effective where you can actually see them pulling the the tibia forward so they're learning how to translate the tibia using the the anterior compartment moving from eccentric orientation to concentric orientation to go from the the high pressure arch to low pressure arch um, and so again, you can use this. This is also a great way to recapture your internal rotations all the way up the chain, um, a little hint for you there. So I hope this is useful for you. Again, it's just a little bit of, of pressure related relationships through the foot. This is also gonna help you sort of diagnose what kind of, a, what kind of an orthotic you might need, what kind of a shoe you might need. Um, that's a different story for a different day. Have a great Friday, have a stellar weekend, and I will see you next week.